so in this episode I thought I would give you a bit of a guided tour of my private mix room uh, and we're going to start off um, on the console. Um, it's a 26 channel 8 bus uh, to 2 um, tack matchless. Uh, it's been augmented and tweaked around over the years. Um, when I got it it was actually 37 channel and they'd uh, cannibalised the patch bay so we're doing a lot of work on this at the moment but it is functional and is working at the moment which is uh, which is good so it's earning its keep. Um, so yeah I'm going to take you through a guided tour of a single channel strip and um, look at the different options that are available on an analog desk and maybe you guys who are mixing in digital audio workstations can see how um, they're in, they were inspired by analog desks and uh, perhaps how elegantly um, the old analog desks uh, got around the uh, limitations of hardware compared to uh, digital systems. So uh, yeah, let's zoom in on a channel strip. Okay, so we have here a channel strip and this is essentially one of these uh, long metal strips with all the controls. Um, they're interchangeable, they're removable individually for maintenance. Um, they have inputs on the back. Uh, we've got an inside, we've got an output, we've got um, an input uh, in terms of line and mic. Uh, there's a mic pre in this, this top section. Um, and loads of other exciting components, all of which complete the uh, the functions that we'll look at on the desk. Um, here's the fader uh, at the bottom. Um, this one's out for maintenance. It's a bit dusty, um, but yeah. So uh, we're going to be looking at um, an installed module of the same variety um, and seeing the functions that uh, that it uh, performs. One point of note is the multi-pin connector here. Hopefully you can see that if I can focus on it. Yeah, so uh, why so many pins? Well, because we're actually creating multiple mixes. The whole process of, of running a mixing desk is basically to do with creating lots of different mixes. And uh, we'll see how that works in a moment. Okay, so we're now close up on a channel strip. Um, at the top of the channel strip we have a set of 12 buttons and grey buttons and two black ones. Um, just as a side note, this bus trim is a calibration um, uh, area where we can, we can uh, calibrate how much this signal is sent out. So these 12 buttons here allow us to send um, whatever's coming out of this channel to one of 24 different multi-track buses or and or I should say a stereo mix which is your stereo mix that you record back so we've only got 12 buttons here but we've got a shift button that allows us to bank up and down between 1 and 12 and 13 and 24. Um, why do we use these multi-track buses? Well, they would be the inputs to the tape machine originally. Um, so they could be your inputs to your um, audio interface. Or if you're just doing mixing, um, they could be uh, sent uh, to allow you to do parallel sends to uh, different pieces of outboard equipment. So that's the routing matrix. Next, we're going to have a look at the input section. So this is the input section. We've got four buttons and two knobs. We've got a line input uh, trim, a mic input trim, and a phase button and a pad button. These link to the mic, as does the 48 volts option. This is the line or mic selector, which allows us to select what input our channel strip is looking at on essentially the back of the channel strip, where we looked at the inputs before on the, uh, the channel strip which was out. So um, if we were in recording mode we'd probably have it in mic. If we were in tracking uh, mixing mode I should say um, we would have it online. Um, when you use the line input uh, it also picks up the signal from 
the tape input bus, which we've got 24 inputs as well. So, uh, and they're kind of floating around uh, across all the, 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 the desk there. So, um, uh, yeah, so this is channel 21. Um, so if I was sending something into uh, 21 through the multi-pin connector and I clicked line, then it would come up on this channel. Um, so yeah, we've got trims there and that allows us to set the, the input level. And the cool thing about that is that you can, you can actually drive the desk a little bit more when you're mixing and you can create distortion within the desk uh, to a desirable effect. So the next section, the next section is the EQ. Um, it's a uh, parametric EQ. We have a high shelf. Um, let me just show you that. Uh, high frequency, um, and it's this little sign, so shelf. Um, we can choose either 12K or 6K, and we can boost or cut uh, according to uh, our taste. Um, there's actually no markings on there, but I, I think it's um, I think it's 15 dB. Um, I'm not sure. I have to check on that. Um, so the next section, mid frequency one. Mid frequency one. We can choose off frequency here with this green knob, and these are all detented. So um, you, you've got a center point which, which clicks in, um, and we can boost or cut. And we also have a Q button. So up is wide Q, down is narrow Q, and you can see that according to the image there. Okay, mid frequency two, uh, which ranges from 80 to 3.2K. So you'll see there's, there's actually some sort of crossover here. Um, so that's 400 to 15K, and we've got uh, for um, 80 to uh, 3.2K. So those mid frequency bands can sweep across each other. And the functionality is very much the same, but the, um, the Q button is down at the bottom. And yeah, that's the mid EQ2. And then we've got the bottom section of the EQ where we have a high pass filter. Um, the option to patch in the EQ or not, and we also have similar to the high shelf earlier, we've got 60 and 120 hertz, um, which you'll notice um, are kind of relate to the 6k and 12k, and you can cut or boost um, the, uh, the low frequency. The next section uh, auxiliaries. So, um the auxiliaries on this desk are really cool, um, and I'll show you on one of these, this channel here that has uh, prints still remaining. So, uh, we can assign one, two, and three. So, uh, we've got one, two, and this is a stereo auxiliary going to three and four with a pan function. Number one has a pre option. Um, and um, as does this number three and four. However, we can also transfer the, um, the auxiliary one and two, and we can create auxiliary five and six. So using just these two knobs, um, we can choose either five and six or one and two, and we can choose pre or post for those. Um, this is a stereo auxiliary send, so it's either assigned to 3 and 4 as default, or if we depress this button, it becomes 7 and 8. We've got a pan option, so we can choose whereabouts in the stereo field our um, source material is. So um, we can you know, pan it left or right, or we can, we can keep it assigned um, similarly with the mix to stereo bus, or we can send it... Uh, in a different direction, which is actually really useful for mixing, and uh, we'll come across that at some point. So this little line here allows us to uh, assign this um, auxiliary send, when it's in 7 and 8 mode, um, to the uh, monitor mix. Um, and we'll talk about that right now. So what's a monitor mix? Well, uh, we've got our fader mix, with our long faders, uh, and that's our main stereo mix. But we, we also have a monitor mix, which is another stereo mix that we can uh, we can utilize. So it's really useful for if you want to mix down 
um, on this desk you're able to mix down twice as many inputs as channels that you have. Um, you don't have full EQ control over these inputs, these monitor inputs, but um, they uh, they kind of let you um, let you expand um, your your mix inputs. Particularly useful for summing, so you can you can actually mix um, 52 channels down on this desk um, just using the 26 uh, channel strips. Um, uh, so what would you use a monitor mix for um, in in a tracking session? Well, you can use it as Q send um, to to send to uh, an artist. Um, but how I use it is uh, because the uh, long faders control the signal to tape on this desk. Um, this is essentially like a, sh a short fader. Um, so, uh, but they've 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 put a rotary uh, pot in there for that. So. Um, yeah, you can you can select um, your listening levels when you're tracking uh, using this monitor section, and the uh, main stereo section allows you to uh, to choose what you're listening to in the control room. Um, you'll notice a bus tape or effects option here, and that allows us to uh, key this monitor section from either the uh, the bus. Or uh, the tape return, um, or uh, effect returns. So uh, you can do all sorts of kind of really useful things um, with the monitor monitor mix here. So um, next section we've got pan, obviously that's pan for the uh, the long fader here. Um, We've got a mute button. These mute buttons are slightly different. Uh, that's one of the things that I'm going to be uh, replacing at some point or tidying up to bring them all back to the original condition. Um, PFL, which is uh, non toggling on this channel, but the older channels, it's latching in and out. Uh, we've got a peak meter here, which allows us to see when the uh, the input is being clipped. And it's like a soft clipping kind of thing, so that's quite cool. Um, and mute groups, so uh, we'll have a look at the mute groups momentarily. Basically, this allows us to um, select, for instance, all the drum kit and the patch in um, a mute and automatically mute individual channels um, from a single button. Okay, so next we're going to have a look at. Um, the uh, sensor section of the console which controls the uh, groups. So the next section of the console is four channels, um, or four channel strips I should say, um, and they each control um, a stereo group. So we've got four separate stereo groups, each mutable etc. And we have auxiliary sends, pans, and so on for each of these. So you could use these as um, groups for mixing. Um, so you could send your drums to one group. You could send your um, guitars to another, and vocals to another, etc. And you can choose how these are panned. Or you could use these as um, mix returns from an eight-track tape machine. Um, so. They kind of built in a lot of versatility into this this um, particular uh, configuration because you know that's what you had to do uh, if you were designing desks in the 80s. So these uh, mute group buttons, mute group masters, allow us to mute. Uh, say I press mute group master one, which is not labelled at the moment. Um, it would mute any of the uh, channels which had group one press down and two likewise. Um, eagle eye viewers will notice the uh, repair job needed on the master mute for the stereo master. The next section is the auxiliary section. Um, the, uh, the module starts with an oscillator which we can use to um, either send out um, a, a predefined oscillation um, signal uh, from a dedicated output, or we can send it to Slate, which sends it to all the multi-track buses. We've got two very simple EQs, three-band EQs, um, high, mid, and low, and we can uh, basically carve out the different signal that we want to send to auxiliaries one and three, or two and four. 
so that gives us a bit more control over what we're sending. And then we've got AFL options, um, so we can listen to what we're sending out on each of the eight auxiliaries and a master auxiliary send. Talkback section, we can either send the talkback to Slate, so we can record that to the multi-track, um, or various other options actually, or we can um, send it so it's auxiliary 3, 4 and 7 and 8. Um, so they would be your kind of your stereo um, uh, your stereo Q mixes. Uh, there's a gain there, microphone hidden under there, and that's your top back button. It's uh, momentary latching, uh, momentary, I should say. These are the um, latch switches to control the mute groups that we discussed earlier. And finally, in this little tour of the uh, console, we have the um, master fader module. So we've got controls for how our meter bridge behaves, either VU or peak meter. Um, we've got um, an auxiliary stereo output and an auxiliary stereo input, um, and various controls for that. But the, the really interesting bit here is the control room monitor. So um, we've got options for how loud our PFL um, plays back. So we've got like a trim for the PFL when we're, when we're soloing. Uh, we've also got listen functions, uh, take one, take two, monitor mix that we discussed earlier, or the main output. Um, main level, as you can see, this one's really been used over the years. Um, that's the main um, uh, level to your speakers. Uh, we've got an alternate speaker option, which is speaker two. We've got a dim function to drop the volume. And we've got mute. Then we have our monitor Q send, which is a master fader for a monitor level. And we can also decide to listen to either monitor or the stereo mix. Um, if we press them both, that allows us to sum, like I was talking about before, allows us to sum all the different um, the, the two different signals together. Um, obviously this channel seen better days so that's one of the next ones up for uh, the maintenance, all this section actually. Um, a little repair job needed on the, uh, the master mute and there's our master faders. So I hope you enjoyed that little tour of my uh, mixing console. Um, as I say uh, it's uh, under heavy ma maintenance at the moment and cleaning and so on, but it actually functions really well. I'll do another video of that um, and show you a mix at some point. Um, yeah, so hopefully you've been able to translate some of the the functions on the desk here um, to what you would see in a digital audio workstation and also see how um, the desk designers have got around various issues, for instance, um, in the auxiliaries, how the auxiliaries um, only have three knobs, but there's actually eight auxiliaries and so on. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. And um, as I say, we'll try and get a, a sort of video of uh, a mix process going on for one of the future episodes. Um.